All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Payless Shoe Stores, or otherwise known as just Payless. So I do have several pages of notes on this, so hopefully I can keep it all in order and make a video out of it. So if you're not familiar with this place, they were a discount shoe retailer with stores all across the world, but the bulk of their locations were within the United States. I mean, if you were looking for a high quality running shoe, or a comfortable work shoe, or something like that, then you probably wouldn't find what you're looking for at Payless, but they did have some pretty good options. I mean, I have bought a few pairs of shoes there over the years. The quality might not have been the greatest, but they were shoes nonetheless. So anyways, they were a big player in the shoe industry throughout the years. At their peak in the late 90s, they would have over 5,000 stores. After a change in ownership, acquisitions, and mergers, they would fall on hard times in the 2000s. They would struggle financially for years, until they finally met their demise in 2019. The first Payless was opened in 1956 by two cousins in Topeka, Kansas. They would stay loyal to Kansas, as they would be headquartered there until 2019. They were credited with being one of the first self-service shoe stores in the United States. Basically, you didn't have a salesperson going in the back to get a specific size. They would just have the shoes out there on the shelf. You would get them and try them on yourself. Pretty convenient. I know it sounds like a pretty common thing now, but at that time, it was relatively unheard of not to have a shoe salesman. This was part of their strategy to keep overhead low. Basically, they could have just one person running the entire store. One thing about Payless is they kept this strategy pretty much their entire existence. So this first store was pretty successful. In just a few years, they would grow to three locations. And by 1959, they would have 15 locations. So with their success, they would take the company public in 1961. At this point, the company name was Volume Shoe Corporation. So now that they had some capital to work with, they would start to open new stores. At this point, they would start to open about 12 new stores a year. And by the end of 1962, they would report $12 million in sales. In the early 70s, they would acquire St. Louis-based company Hill Brother Shoes. This would add about 130 stores to the company. They would convert about 25 of those into Payless, and they would just leave the others to operate under the Hills Brothers name. In 1975, they would have 500 locations. And later in 1975, they would change most all their acquired stores into pay less shoe stores. My phone keeps auto-correcting, but they've always spelled shoe source as all one word for some reason. I don't know if it's irrelevant or not, but it's kind of interesting. So something to note here, they would latch on to the shopping mall boom of the 1970s. The majority of their new stores would be located within shopping malls. In fact, over their existence, about 40% would be in malls. In 1979, Payless would be sold to May's department stores. They were a company that just managed other smaller department stores. Makes sense. So May's would start to expand rapidly. Throughout their tenure as Payless owner, they would have stores in the United States, Canada, Caribbean, Australia, Jamaica, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. They were pretty much known around the world. Throughout the 80s, they would continue to be successful, and they would keep growing locations. During this time, they are mostly known for their kids and women's shoes. In fact, that would make up about 70% of their business. In 1994, they would purchase Pickway Shoes. In 1996, Mays would separate Payless from the rest of their assets. They would be spun off into their own company. I mean, this is usually a sign that the company is about to be sold, but in this case, it was to put Payless back on the stock market. So, they were a public company once again. In 1998, they had 4,600 locations. That's $2.4 billion in sales. Also that year, they boasted they sold over 200 million pairs of shoes. Not too bad. In 1999, Payless.com would be launched, officially taking the shoe source online. Also in 99, they would open up Payless inside of Shopco department stores. 
So fast forward to 2003, they would have 5,000 locations, and they would operate 200 Parada shoe stores. However, this would be their peak. It would be all downhill from here. So one year later, with sales starting to decline, they announced they would be restructuring the company. Along with making some store improvements, they would start to close stores. And after just seven years of operation, they would start to close down several of their Canadian locations. Along with that, they would close about 200 in the United States. Around this time, they would meet intense competition, not just from online, but from other retailers such as Walmart. Walmart started selling low-cost shoes, pretty much the same quality that you could get from Payless. And Walmart used that same business model. They are definitely self-service. Hell, you have to check out and bag your own stuff there. Not only was competition an issue, but foot traffic within their mall locations were down drastically. I mean, malls just weren't very popular at that time. And, well, I guess they're still not. Anyways, in 2007, they would make a major purchase. Payless would purchase Stride Right and Ked shoes. The price tag was around $800 million. This would put them into some major debt, as most of that money was borrowed. They would continue to lose money, especially during the 2008 recession, and they would have to close a few more stores. Anyways, in 2012, they would try to recoup some of their money. They would actually sell off the Keds brand, the Wolverine. With struggling sales, they would be unable to secure any loans, as Moody's would downgrade their credit rating in 2016. With this, they would have to close their Australian locations. And with that, in 2017, Payless announced they would be filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. With this filing, it would close over 400 locations in the United States. So during this time, they obviously had a lot of debt and their company would actually be taken over by some of the lenders. From here, sales would just continue to decline, and there really wasn't much of a way out. In 2019, they announced once again they would be filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. With this filing, it would close all remaining stores along with their website. Watch another iconic retailer is disappearing. Payless Shoe Source will close all of its remaining 2,100 stores in the U.S. This comes on the heels of the debt-ridden retailer's bankruptcy filing nearly two years ago. Payless closed hundreds of stores as part of its reorganization, but that was not enough to save the brand. Liquidation sales will begin Sunday in stores and online. While some locations will close as early as next month, most stores will remain open until May. So yeah, I mean, it happened pretty quick. Most of their decline was between 2008 and 2019. So that's the story of Payless Shoe Source. They had a good ride, but in the end, they just couldn't compete with the ever-changing market. But there is some more to this. In 2020, they would relaunch their website. They would also move their headquarters from Kansas to Florida. And they actually had plans to open three to 500 new stores within the next couple of years. So you might be able to shop at Payless once again. And oh yeah, they did drop the shoe source from their name. It's now just Payless, which is what everyone called them anyway, but yeah. Anyway guys, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you found it interesting. And if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know about it in the comments and I will do my best to make a video on it. So anyway, guys, I will see you next time. Thank you.